Okay, guys, welcome back to the channel. Repping Archray Resort. That's where I'm building my Airbnb, which may be catering to audiophiles. Updates on that coming soon, breaking ground. Uh, but what I wanted to do was follow through on something I mentioned in a prior video of additional things I was going to share with you from The Home Entertainment Show. I've already done wrap-ups and whatnot, but I had two interviews, well, one presentation by Andrew Jones, hour long. That's coming next. What I wanted to do in this video is kind of give you two for what I realized is even though I gave Borison one of my best of show and their new C3 speaker, uh, I realized that the video I shot when I went into that room never fully uploaded uh, to YouTube. One of the drawbacks of my coverage is I go in the room and I upload to YouTube and I assume it eventually gets up there. But because of the bandwidth at that hotel was terrible. I had to go across the street to McDonald's and get away from there to actually get stuff to upload. And Doug and I were like amazed. It was showing two hours of upload at the hotel. We go over to the McDonald's. It went fast. So in any case, something happened with this video in the Borison room that didn't get uploaded. And it was a pretty long video, more a testament to, again to why I picked it. Uh, it was over eight minutes long. Now I've edited it down a little bit for you guys now that I have chance to edit it and got just the stuff that where I was in the sweet spot for you. Uh, but I want to share that video because it was in my best of, but you never got to see the raw footage when I went into that room and heard the music clips. But also this same video, I'm going to share with you an interview I did with, it's brief, but with um, Arian Jansen who has this um, Sonorous tape deck that was really impressive to Doug. He said that was one of the first things. He was there the day before I even got there Friday that really stood out to him. And he was talking to Aaron and didn't even know who he was uh, relative to other things that I've covered in my videos where I went out to Rick Brown's house and he also does this proximity sub. I'll put up a link to that video because you're going to probably want to if you are interested, learn about that. Because Arian is a guy that, as I mentioned before, believes in physics and engineering. That's his background, mastering. He also makes remasters of analog tape that increase spatial cues. And Doug was very impressed with that. Steve, uh, Steve McCormick and Rick Brown both can attest to his work there. So this is a very bright guy that a lot of people don't even know about, wouldn't even know who he is. And this is my first time getting to meet him, although I knew his name via Rick Brown. And that's what a lot of you guys uh, that follow me are interested in. It's not for everybody. It's not for a drive-by audiophile. But this is a guy that I think many of you guys will be interested in to get to know. Check out his tape deck. Very impressive. And maybe get some of his recordings. And I promise to have more in the future, especially on that proximity sub. He's just not making it a commercial product. But if anybody's going to get it, it's going to be me uh, in the future to try it. Because my limited exposure with it at Rick Brown's house was very impressive in an A-B. So enjoy, guys. Okay. Going to listen to some Borisons. Not these right now. Sounds like the uh, track called Mumbo Jumbo, as you can see.
worth another song, I think. Really good imaging too, you can't feel through the cell phone recording, but very well set up. For those that are longtime subscribers, you'll know that I saw and heard a proximity sub in Rick Brown's place, and Arian is the inventor of that. Um, we'll talk about that in a little bit, just on a cursory level, because it's not really a marketed product for, per se. But Doug was impressed yesterday with your new tape deck, and I thought we might talk a little bit more about this, because several people have remarked about your tape deck, so if we could maybe go talk a Take a look at uh, okay. that. I don't know if we want to turn down the music a little bit, but. I don't know if this gives <laughs> enough sound pressure for you, or should I turn it down a little bit? Well, you could probably talk loud enough if uh, people are enjoying. Yeah. But yeah, what are the, what's the basics you're, you're showing off here with this? Yeah, so this is the, uh, the new HR10 Mark II. Um, I introduced this deck actually last year. Last year. At uh, Expo now was the first uh, official uh, uh, introduction. I've been making uh, the HR10 uh, since 2011. But that was the Mark I. And it was actually time to upgrade for a few reasons. One reason is the fact that a lot of parts I couldn't really get anymore because they were... I'm going to turn this years. down just a little bit. Oh, is it that one? Yeah, just so people can hear you a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah, a lot of parts were not uh, uh, available anymore. So I needed to do something. Um, so I'm going to do a new version of it. Um, 
replace all the parts, design new, new uh, parts for stuff that I could not get anymore, give it a, a new look as well. Okay. At the same time, uh, improve some of the uh, uh, audio circuitry because I had developed over the years several things, so that may be working uh, pretty good actually. So I. Uh, made those improvements, put them uh, in the machine. So, so it's based on a studer? It's, it's based, uh, it basically, um, if you look at it, it's still a little bit recognizable, especially on this part. Uh -huh. But it's basically the B77 slash PR99 uh, Daikon chassis motor and headwork. Okay. So everything else is new. Gotcha. So all electronics are new. When you buy this, you're basically getting even more than a renovated version. This is basically this is a completely new design. New, okay. Um, again, I, I, I take these maybe 15 Studer parts right. that I still use. Still use, and then. But everything else is uh, is new design. Okay. Stretch. And that's beautiful looking. Yeah, yeah, clean. Again, it includes motor drivers, uh, power supply, audio electronics. The audio electronics are uh, tube based. You have a tube output section. Okay. Uh, oh, tube output section. Yeah. You can actually, totally on the back, you can see uh, there. Down there. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard for me to get to, but yeah. So you got balanced outputs. Yeah, I got balanced outputs here. They're on top because. I made that basically for uh, some of them are used in professional setting and they okay. are used horizontal. And, um, okay, so you can lay, lay it down, yeah, okay. So the RCA connectors are on the back for yep. if you use it uh, straight up. Gotcha. And price point? Price point is uh, 32500 32500 okay. Yeah, uh, I pretty much included most uh, of the options that I had on the previous model, so they're in there. But this one, for instance, uh, it's, a, it's a very popular feature, especially if you use my holographic imaging tape. You can rewind the deck and walk away, and it will stop automatically at the beginning of the tape. If you come back, come back, you press play, and 15 seconds later, the music starts. Nice convenience. So that's yeah, that that makes a difference in people that, enjoying yeah. their yeah. yeah. That you makes it these tapes too. Yeah, what? Yeah, I do. Uh, I can tell you a little bit about that. Um, what you're hearing at the moment is a uh, Sonorous holographic imaging tape. Oh, the holographic imaging. Yeah. Oh, Doug was telling me about this. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of the things I do, uh, people, most people know that I'm a recording engineer for Young Records. Okay. Um, so I have experience in recording, but I also do a lot of mastering, and I developed a an, uh, an process that basically can either give, give you kind of a three-dimensional three sound field from either multi-channels, which we use for Yarlam on stage with multiple mics to, to capture the, the spatial cues. Spatial cues. But uh, since 2016, I also expanded that, that you can take, get that information, or most of that information, out of existing two-track recordings. And that's basically what, what, what you hear. This, uh, this, well, actually, this is a multi-channel recording. <laughs> Some of the other ones are uh, just stereo recordings. Stereo Existing, recordings uh, that you kind of remix in a way? Or? I, I basically run them through this process, and that process uh, unfolds the, the information that is really already there in the recording, but it's not picked up in the correct way. That's why you normally do not really hear it. You can hear it to some extent, especially if you're a trained audiophile, you can uh -huh. kind of hear the, the sound stage. Right. But Normally, if you take your uh, your cousin that has no interest in audio put in front of your system, he will never get much further than anything, let's say, within the speaker field. If you do this, because it's actually correct for the, the errors in that, if you play that same album through the holographic imaging, even your cousin that will have no interest in audio... Oh, hear the here, difference. Here's the whole sound stage. First time you'll uh, hear it. And these, these are recordings that people have that you then convert to tapes yes. with that holographic yes. imaging. Yes. Basically what I do is, uh, if, if you own an album, let's say The Dark Side of the Book, yeah. Everybody has that. Song. Yes. Or, or eight copies of it, like me. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can give him one copy. That's right. Yeah. You, you basically, uh, if you can uh, prove that you have ownership of a legal copy of that, so 
could, could be in a vinyl record, could be CD, could be a, 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 an eight track, SACD, yeah, something like that. Steve, that is there, is there a his, holographic is there a reference to you, you as far as holographic best tape? No, yes, I have. Because I normally use. He has, uh, he has talked uh, about that information before, have, and we've, okay. heard, we've heard some of the but results. I need to know yeah, that you. I'm just learning about this. Yeah. Oh, so because so, I have no legal rights to gotcha. sell, uh, so, sell it. So you're not sell. taking the physical album from someone. They just need to show that they own it. They own. Their and you have a lot of stuff. And, and then I will. And then the tape will basically be your personal version analog, of it. Uh, analog copy. Gotcha. Yeah. So basically a remix awesome. version using your, it's an algorithm or something you use? Well, it's, it's, or is it tools? It's, 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 full, it's fully, uh, fully yes. analog. It's fully analog. Oh, okay. not, there's not a, a bit flipping, basically. Is that right? Yeah. So it's a fully analog system that gives that. And it gives Top that. secret, though. Well, yeah, I mean, I'm, <laughs> not, I'm not advertising the content. Okay. Uh, <laughs> no. Well, now, now that we're on the top secret stuff, you got to explain the proximity sub to me, just in general. Okay. <laughs> Actually, it's kind of interesting because what happens in this room, we happen to be here in, uh, in Scott Walker's room uh, where he sells my tape deck, but he also uh -huh. sells von Swiker speakers. Yeah. And von Swiker actually does something similar to what I did with my uh, uh, proximity sub. And if you, you see that in the back of the, of the room here, there are two large subwoofers that are sitting basically closer to the listener than these speakers. Yes. And what, what we, and that the proximity sub does the same. It's a little bit more uh, optimized. So I have special setup tones and everything to do that. But this does virtually the same. It basically corrects the, the sound wave uh, of the bass at the listener position. So at listener position, because of the room, you will get uh, all kinds of notes in the room. But more importantly, you actually get disconnection of the air velocity and the air pressure of a moving wave. Okay. And that is the reason why often if you just put a normal measurement microphone there, so well, it's pretty flat, but then you listen, I don't hear any bass. How is that possible? Well, the energy is in the room, but it's not now properly you're sitting, done. yeah. Yeah, it, it's not uh, in the proper form. It has to be in uh, the air velocity and the air so pressure. The, you're, the you're, you're giving the velocity all the way to the listening position yeah, in the, a way? The, the, the the, for, for a wave to travel, actually, mm -hmm. it has, needs to have a velocity and a pressure that is 90 degrees out of phase. That's just standard physics. It's true for uh, EMI, okay. uh, for uh, radio waves, basically. It's also true for audio waves. Um, but that, because of the room, and uh, the room is often small compared to the wavelengths of those bass frequencies, you lose that 90 degrees uh, connection, and your ear will kind of see that as a flapper on your ear, and your brain will take it out. So that's why you do not hear the bass. Hmm. And while you measure it, say, well, it's there, but I don't hear it. Because the mic hears it, but your ears, yeah. okay. But your brain takes it out, so if you correct that, with the, uh, with the proximity base, it's normally a small subwoofer, and this is very similar to that. Um, you will get a uh, very good base on the listening position. And do you hook it up the same as any other sub in terms of... It, it will be sitting... Uh, yeah, you basically hook it up... In terms of a line level in, and yeah. then... I mean, I, I used to have a controller, basically. Okay. Which, uh, I saw the controller. Yeah. But it's getting the same signal as your other speaker. The same, same signal, just a line signal yeah, between your, from your preamp, basically, okay. between, uh, where you put in the, another sub as well. Okay. But this box is in between. Um, and it assumes you have a closed door room, right? Well, yeah, that, that depends. I always say, uh, how, how do you uh, listen most of the time? Okay, whatever is normal. Yeah. Okay, yeah. all right. If you always have your door open. Uh, it's less, calibrated, less, though, for one style of the room. Yeah, I mean, and then you use to keep it, yeah, it at that. It will be completely off when you open the door, but right. I normally uh, said to people, okay, how do you normally listen here? If the door is always open, then let's optimize it. So the door is always open. Okay. And it doesn't require huge drivers or anything. No, it's uh, because uh, the proxy sub itself only it needs to correct either velocity or pressure because uh, we have a, a mismatch there. Well, velocity is not very easy to correct because then you need large, large uh, panel uh, speakers. Okay. But pressure you get basically from a small closed sub. Okay. No, no, uh, 
ported or uh, passive radiators closed sub and preferably a small one okay and that will give you an abundance of pressure and a limitation of, of velocity so with that you can correct the right balance again and the right phase at the listener position well i know it's not a marketed product right now um i did hear it a b it at ricks and i was impressed in the preliminary one day i'd like to try it especially if it becomes a marketed product again but i'm glad you explained it to uh, well i still don't know it <laughs> understand it fully but that's yeah. probably intentionally <laughs> uh, but yeah, this no, is... It's, um, it, it, it's kind of difficult because it, it really goes into... There are two things that really play uh, a role there, and that's the, the, the physics of, uh, of wave propagation. Yeah. But the other hand is the uh, psychoacoustics. The same thing with the holographic imaging. Yes. It's all about psychoacoustics. Well, I look for people that understand that level of it too, because if you don't, <laughs> yeah. then you don't really understand why sometimes the measurements don't correlate, and it's all about correlating what's in your ear to the measurements to be able to do things perfectly. Yeah. And again, your, uh, your, your hearing is not only your ears, it's probably even more your brain. Yeah. And your brain will normally not accept things that are not correct. It will yes. just try to Yes, it block knows out. what's reality, yeah. yeah. It will try to block it out. That's, that's actually a natural thing because for, right. uh, for people that live in the middle of nature and everything. Yes, yeah, you, you, need, to, you alive, need to be cognizant yeah. of anything that's out of place, yes. Yeah, and, and all the stuff that's co going on continuously, that kind of disappears from your brain. Just yes. like your ticking clock. You don't hear the ticking of your clock, even if you try. Mm -hmm. You have to right. try very hard to hear your clock ticking, even though it was Exactly. Ticking. Yes. And that's the same here, is that the uh, your brain will take out the bass if it's not properly uh, related right. uh, between the, the, the pressure and the velocity and the wave. Your brain will just suppress it. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully one day I'll follow up more on that pros uh, prospect. Doug is very interested in your tape deck, so we may have some more on that. Thank you for sharing that, as well as your holographic. I don't even know how to title this video. We covered so much <laughs> stuff, but great finally meeting you. I've heard a lot about you from Rick, so thanks again.